September 11th, the economic meltdown on Wall Street. Are these simply the signs of the time or something more? Today, we'll look at the current climate of America and explore its spiritual implications. Join me around the table is my dear friend, April Simon. Hello, Jenny. How are you? I'm doing great. Kendra Kelly Dean, how are yes, you? I'm good. How are yes. you today? And how is your little one? Oh, she's awesome. I love her. That. <laughs> Cindy Murdoch, how are you? Hi, I'm great. Thank you. It's, it's always good to good have to you here. here. And our special guest, we're so excited. Yes. Jonathan Kahn is here. Welcome to the table. Great to be here, Jenny. It's so good to have you. Your book, The Harbinger, amazing. Cindy, he was on earlier on, mm. on Celebration. I saw you over there just listening. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and you know, I hate to say this, but I never had heard the word harbinger yeah. until him. So yeah. I wondered how many people are viewing that don't know what that is. Well, we're going to talk about it. Jonathan, <laughs> okay, what sure. is a harbinger? A harbinger is a foreshadow of something that's going to come. It can be a harbinger of good things or it can be a harbinger of warning. In the book, The Harbinger, it's a harbinger of warning, of national judgment. You know, I think it's very interesting that you had no idea that God had this book planned for you. Tell us all about how that happened. So I was praying after 9-11 because we're, we're located there and uh, I was led right to this passage, this section of the first warnings that were given to Israel and it was this strike on the land. And I heard later that David Wilkerson did this, had said the same word for 9-11. And a while later I'm at ground zero and my attention is drawn to an object, it was a tree, and, that, and something said, search that. And it became, becomes this puzzle piece of this mystery that keeps getting bigger and bigger. And as I'm doing this, I didn't know where it was going to lead. And it just kept blowing me away and blowing me away. And it became the basis of the harbinger. So did you know when you started that there would be nine harbingers? No. No, So no. did they just keep it just showing kept, up? It just kept, yeah, it just kept going. I didn't know where it was going to end. And yeah. I was sharing before that, you know, I was led immediately to this particular verse. And I didn't realize as I'm, one day I'm, I press the button on my computer to find that verse. And instead of going to the Bible, it goes to the United States congressional record that, that this verse was actually oh proclaimed, goodness. that I, that I was led to from the beginning, you know, so I didn't know where this was going. It was kind of, it was, it was, I was being led to the end from the beginning without realizing. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about the beginning. All of us remember where we were on 9-11. Oh, yes. yes. You remember, where yes. were you, Kendra? You know, I was at home, and I was, on, I was getting ready to go to college. Or was I go to class? Getting ready to go to college. Uh -huh. I remember I was and at home, mom. too, yeah. and, my, and my husband <laughs> came running into the bedroom and turned the TV on and said, you've got to see this. Where were you, yeah. April? I was at home. It was my daughter's birthday, fifth birthday, and I was heading to gymnastics. Oh, wow. Yeah. Where were you, Cindy? I was in Madisonville, Kentucky at Sister Stahl's house. We were getting ready to do a TV program, and I was getting oh. dressed and saw the plane go into the building. Oh. So. Everyone, is it, is it, you just heard yeah. them tell details yeah. of yeah. where they were Everybody and what they were doing. Yeah. So let's talk about that first yeah. harbinger because what you do in the book, it's kind of a novel form, mm -hmm. which I love that. So it's easy to understand, but you compare mm -hmm. ancient Israel mm -hmm. that was blessed by God, yes. ordained by God, yes. and at, at one point in the beginning honored God yes. to America, yes. which was founded under Judeo-Christian mm -hmm. values, mm -hmm. was blessed by God. There's mm -hmm. no question, <laughs> right. the blessing right. yes. on America. Right. And um, our founding fathers, you know, everything on the buildings, mm -hmm. on our money, mm -hmm. and God we mm -hmm. trust, mm -hmm. God was central yes. to the forming of America. Mm -hmm. That is undeniable. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about yeah. that first harbinger and how it relates yeah. to America today. <clears throat> yeah, America was formed after the pattern of Israel. The Puritans actually said that. Not that America's America, Israel's Israel. But it's something special about it. Right, and, and you're not saying replacement theology. No, Let me no, just no, say that. No, I'm Jewish. I'd have to replace myself. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that. Until I can figure out how to do that, I can't right. do that. Uh, so, so so, so they, we're also following the pattern of Israel's apostasy, of the turning away. Mm -hmm. A nation which once knew and then turns away from God, turns against its very foundation. That's happened mm -hmm. with Israel, happening with America. That's so, the scary part of it all. Yeah. Yeah. And, then, and now we're watching the same pattern of Israel's warning and judgment. That's, that, that's the heart of the harbinger. And so the ultimate thing is that, that that is a pattern of judgment in the Bible or warning. And that is the first one, and it didn't just happen with Israel, it happened with Judah too. First one is before the nation's destruction or judgment, years before, mm -hmm. there's a strike on the land and it's a temporary removing of the hedge of protection. It's temporary. It's a wake up call. God's not trying to destroy, he's trying to save. It's a wake up call. And so it happened with Israel in 732, B, 732 BC went with this invasion, but Israel didn't repent. Israel actually got harder, defied God. And they rose up, they made a vow, and the vow is the, 
the, the kind of the, the heart of the harbinger, the decoder. Isaiah 9, 10, they said, the bricks have fallen in the attack, but we will rebuild with hewn stone. The sycamores have been cut down in the attack, but we will plant cedars in their place. And what they're saying, and every commentary says it, they're defying God. They're saying, God, you're not gonna humble us. We're not mm -hmm. repenting, we're not turning back. We're gonna vow and come back stronger without you. And the thing is, we have America now, and what happens? September 11, 2001 is the breach of our hedge of protection. Because we, did, we didn't even maybe realize how much God had put a hedge of protection right, around. around America yeah. because yeah. America was founded mm -hmm. on <clears throat> Godly and, principles, yeah. and we've blessed and, Israel, and we've 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 ble we've yeah. sent out the gospel. Yeah, we but weren't, we weren't afraid given, to display no. the Ten Commandments. Right. No, once, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. It happened in Israel too. They took down the t basically. They said away with the Ten Commandments. We're doing the same thing, and yeah. and it says, but too much is given, much is required. Right. And so yeah. yes, and we only realize these things when they're gone. And so here is temporary lifted, and it's a shaking of America. We all remember people rushing to churches. You know, right after we said well, it's going to be revival, but there was no revival pray, 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 because yeah. Yeah, yeah, God bless America, but there was no. No repentance. No it was turn. shocking though that first Sunday. Yeah. Like all the churches oh, yeah. just yeah. flooded. Y'all remember that? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Cool. We were like people amazing. that have never gone to church yeah. went to church, yes. but yes. it was short lived. Short -lived. You could, it's almost, it was a shadow of what a national revival could look like. Wow. It almost happened, but it didn't because there was no repentance. And if anything, we've gotten worse. We've farther, farther away from God. So what happens is that we're doing exactly what Israel did and where the, the leaders are reenacting. It's like a replaying of this ancient drama that happened when Israel had this. And so what's happening is the, the harbingers start appearing. Appearing. These nine harbingers that appeared in the last days of Israel are now reappearing on American soil exactly, precisely. Some involve ceremonies, some took place in New York, some in Washington, some involve the highest leaders of the land. So it's True. all reenacting, replaying. The last days of Israel, we're getting the same warning. So the first harbinger was the, the breach. The breach of the hedge, yes. Okay, and then you've got to talk about the tree because okay. that's so important. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. Sure. One of the things that says the and it's really everything that is in there has come true. But uh, the sycamore says the sycamores have fallen. And what happened is when they attacked the land, the enemies not just did the uh, buildings; they attacked the trees. They, and they, this was in ancient Israel. Ancient Israel, Assyria attacked them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so 732 BC. So this is a sign of national judgment. The 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 tearing down of a tree it comes up in the Bible again and again. And the sycamore is a sign of national judgment. So what could this have to do with America? In 9-11 and the last days, last moments of 9-11, as the tower is coming down, it sends forth a shockwave, it sends forth a beam, and that strikes an object that is on the corner of ground zero, actually of right there. It is a sycamore, it's a tree. The sycamore is struck down, the biblical mm -hmm. sign of national judgment. The people of New York make it into a symbol. They put it on display, not realizing what this means. Yeah. And, and then it says, right in the next one, it says, the sycamores have fallen, but we'll replace it with a cedar tree. And there's, again, a defiance, God. We're coming back stronger, stronger tree, stronger everything. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is, you know, they, they, in Hebrew, the word, they didn't use cedar. That's an English word. They used the word erez tree. That can be a cedar. It can also be a spruce. It's an evergreen conifer tree. What happens two years after 9-11, a tree appears in the sky at the corner of ground zero. It's being lowered into a wow. spot of earth, the exact spot where the sycamore had stood. And they replaced it just as Israel did. And the tree they, they use is not a sycamore. It's a biblical Erez tree, the exact tree of Isaiah. So they're doing the exact action, the Amazing. exact thing. Nobody's trying to do it. And it keeps getting more eerie because then it gets to the vow. You know, and, mm -hmm. and that is that, that here the actual leaders of Israel, they actually made this vow. That's the eighth harbinger. They actually vowed this vow. Could an American leader, because there would have to be an American leader to do this, mm -hmm. they'd have to vow this vow, and it's a vow of judgment. So what American leader would do this in their right mind? No American leader really would do it. But three years after 9-11, an American leader gets up in Washington, D.C., and he, it's John Edwards running for vice president, senator, and what he does is he, he says there's a word now. He's, it's the anniversary of 9-11, so he's talking about 9-11, and out of his mouth comes the ancient vow of Israel, word for word, word mm -hmm. pronouncing judgment on America. Let's watch that together. But we will build with dressed stones. The sycamores have been cut down but we will put cedars in their place. Out of some 30,000 verses in the Bible he thought would be inspiring to his audience, he chooses the one verse that's about the judgment of a nation that has just received the first strike and the first warning to speak to commemorate 9-11. And not only does he say this, 
but he builds his entire speech around the ancient vow. His whole speech is a manifestation of the vow. He goes on to say this, let me show you how we are building and putting cedars in those three hallowed places. He goes on, and in a place where smoke once rose, you and I, we will see that cedar rising. And he says yet again, and you'll see that while those bricks fell and the sycamores cut down, our people, our people, are making the cedar cry. That is shocking because if you read a few verses before and a few verses after, mm -hmm. you realize that was pronounced judgment exactly. on Israel. Right. Exactly. And so, but in his mind, he thought he was saying something positive, but yeah. it's just like when you take a few yeah. scriptures yeah. out of yeah. context, right. yeah. it was one of the worst you. things that he could have read oh, to yeah. America. It's, it's identifying America in, in defiance of God. He's speaking about things he doesn't even know what he, he doesn't even know exists. Right. He's talking about the sycamores and the cedar. They exist. And it shows you something because he's linking it to a strike on the land. But that is the, what the verse is talking about. Mm -hmm. He's talking about 9-11, mm -hmm. but he doesn't realize what it's saying. He's pronouncing judgment and yeah. he and without realizing right. it. And of course, this was when he was running for, for, a, vice, a, president. for vice, a vice president. Yeah. And of course, we know, you know, and again, I say we need to pray for all oh of our goodness. leaders, yeah. but at how his life yeah. unraveled in the deception that and, he was involved in. And that happened with, an, with the other one who voiced this wow. too. So tell us about the other one. This is the very day after 9-11, so it's dramatic. The Congress assembles on Capitol Hill. We, we were so, in all of us, in trauma that we didn't realize It's not just a Republican-Democrat thing. No, no, I it's mean, not. Because God is not either it's one, not. by the way. It's right. not. <laughs> I mean, we won't get into it, but yeah. But yeah, so, so on, here's on Capitol Hill, and America's going to give its response to 9-11, so this is significant. And one man is chosen. It's the Senate Majority Leader, Tom Daschle, represents the Senate he speak for the nation. He gets up and he's the man to give the official response of America. At the end of his speech, he gets up and this is capital, this is, this is congressional record. He says, there's a word from Isaiah that I think speaks to all of us at times like this. Mm -hmm. And out of his mouth comes the ancient vow of Israel's defiance and judgment mm -hmm. that were done by the ancient leaders. He now makes it America's vow on the very day after 9-11 mm -hmm. and it's word for word, the ancient vow mm -hmm. of judgment, he says. And this is, this is the congressional record. America's response was the same as Israel's mm -hmm. that led to their, their judgment. Let's, let's watch that together. A symbol for 212 years of the strength of our democracy. And say that America will emerge from this tragedy as we have emerged from all adversity, united and strong. And what he does at the end of the speech was ominous. I know that there is only the smallest measure of inspiration, of inspiration that can be taken from this devastation. But there is a passage in the Bible from Isaiah that I think speaks to all of us at times like this. What is it? Then he proclaims it from Capitol Hill. The bricks have fallen down, but we will rebuild with dressed stone. The fig trees have been felled, but we will replace them with cedars. Here is the man appointed to give the nation's response, speaking in his capacity, representing the nation. He utters the words of ancient Israel. And he closes the speech with these words. He says this. That is what we will do. We will rebuild and we will recover. That is so shocking. Yes, yes. What, what did you say, April? Are they not what? I just don't get why they don't get it. There's no, nobody seeing it. And I think yeah. it's funny that suddenly they refer to God when they're yeah. trying to take him out, but now they're reading the scripture. I, yeah. It's just baffling to me. So the last posture that we want to take as Americans mm -hmm. is the, the posture that's that's that, given by that verse. And he was speaking for the nation. Yeah. yeah. He said, I think this is where yeah. we are. And, and, I, yeah. and I told you earlier, and and I didn't even know you were going to you know, refer to this verse as strongly, but it's always just been embedded in my heart if my people right. who yes. are called by my yes. name will yeah. humble themselves and pray. And so there's something about that God is looking for a repentant heart. Yes. Um, and, and then he'll heal our land. Yes. But we cannot do it without him. Yes. And when we raise our fist and say, we will stand and we will, God is like, no, you no, won't. You won't. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and ancient Israel fail. Yeah. 
yes. because of this kind of posture. Yes. And, and the same destroyed. thing will happen to America if, if we don't stand up and turn around. Yeah. So talk about the, a little bit before we go to break about the, the, the hewn stone. And so the other object is we will rebuild with hewn stone. So that in Hebrew, the word is gazit, means has to be quarried out of a mountain rock. They quarried out this massive stone, rectangular, brought it back to the ground where the bricks had fallen, and that becomes their vow of defiance. We're going to build a stronger. this is ancient Israel. Ancient Israel. Okay. And then America. After 9-11, people go up to the mountains of New York. They quarry out a, a stone, a biblical gazit stone, tw uh, 20 tons of rock, rectangular block. They have to bring it back to New York. They have to bring it back to the ground of destruction. They bring it to ground zero. They lower it down on the pavement. They have a ceremony around the stone mm -hmm. with the leaders of New York and New Jersey making vows of defiance mm -hmm. over it that we're going to come back stronger than ever and it's without God. Oh, my goodness. Can you believe that? No, I can't believe that it. That we actually did the very same thing. Yeah. We set up a monument, but we didn't yes. say, God, with your help. It's almost like the golden right. calf, right? Yeah, right. without God. Right. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Well, you don't want to go anywhere after the break. We go from September 11th to the economic crisis on Wall Street and find out what this means for America. Stay with us. From ancient mysteries to front page headlines, we are seeing Old Testament warnings manifest right here in America. Today we're here with best-selling author Jonathan Kahn to learn more about what God is saying to this nation. Jonathan, you say that 9-11 was only the beginning. Tell yes. us a little bit about that. Yeah, the principle in the scripture, what happened to ancient Israel, is that when they rejected the first warning, the first shaking comes another shaking. All the commentaries say that. That's the whole point. God d will keep doing it until the nation wakes up mm -hmm. or turns away. So we have now a second shaking. The second shaking of America isn't a physical attack on a building, but it's the very attack on American power itself. Years after 9-11, the economy collapses, the, the America's power collapses. And there's so, all sorts of mysteries with this. We couldn't even begin to get into it what are in, in the Harbinger, but we can touch, I'll try to touch on, on one called Buttonwood. And that is there is, a, there is a mystery in the Bible, a principle that when judgment, days of judgment, that it says, God says, I will expose the foundation. That which people are trusting in, I will, I, will, I will expose it. What's the foundation of America's financial power? It goes back to an island uh, called Manhattan that where they built a wall to protect from Indians and became a trade route and they called it Wall Street. And the, the day that it all began was, was in, in, um, in the late 1800s, they had a secret meeting in New York, merchants, and they, they formed something and they signed a document. To, it was the beginning of Wall Street as we know it. The document was called the Buttonwood Agreement. That's the beginning of Wall Street. People on Wall Street know this. The original name for Wall Street was called Buttonwood, the Buttonwood Association. Now it's the New York Stock Exchange. Why Buttonwood? This is the foundation of America's power. Why? Because they signed it under a tree. The Buttonwood means a tree. So they signed it under that. That's the symbol of America's rise to superpower. So the, the, what was the tree? The tree was the sycamore. So you could call Wall Street the Sycamore Association, America's power marked by the Sycamore, the foundation, the Sycamore marks our rise. On 9-11, the sign of the Sycamore reappears, but now as a for, in a form of foreshadowing a fall. And so that's what happened there. And actually, they even put up a, they put up a, a statue of the Sycamore that fell, and they put it it's an uprooted sycamore. They put it on Wall Street. So now at the end of Wall Street, the end of Wall Street, the, the place that's named after the sycamore, you see a sign of an uprooted sycamore. Here it was built on, the, on a living sycamore. So what does it mean? And so we have the second shaking. And there's this mystery in the Bible called the mystery of the Shemitah. And that is, in a nutshell, every seven years, Israel had, a, had a, no sowing, no buying, selling. Stopped, rest, Sabbath year, called the Shemitah. On the last day, a little 29, all debts are wiped away, all credits wiped away, the financial realm is wiped away, and it was supposed to be a good thing, but Israel turned away from God and it became a judgment. The sign of the Shemitah becomes a judgment. What does it have to do with America? It's the sign of a nation that has driven God out of its life, put money ahead of God, and strikes the financial realm. Well, it's the key is the seven-year mystery. You have, you have the first shaking, 9-11, 2001. You have the second shaking, 2008. That's seven-year cycle. When did, the, when did the collapse happen in 2008? It happened in September, nine years to the, to the month. When? Second week of September, nine years to the Seven week, years. Seven years to the week yeah. of 9-11. Yeah. And, and actually, on the very day that America's commemorating 9-11, the second calamity, the second shaking is being set in motion. What was the, was the, the 
actual greatest day of this collapse. When was it? It was the end of September. It was the greatest stock market crash in American history. When did it take place? On the exact biblical day of the Shemitah. Mm -hmm. Elul 29, the day appointed mm -hmm. to wipe away financial accounts. And that's exactly what it did. And if you go back seven years, seven year mystery, go back seven years and what do you find? In September of 2001, you find the other greatest collapse in American history, the other greatest crash, seven years apart. When did it take place? On the biblical calendar, the other greatest crash up to that day happened on the exact same day of the Shemitah, the day of the sign against a nation that has driven God out of its life. The two greatest crashes in America both happened on the exact same day, exactly seven years apart, to the days, wow. to the hours. What sins was ancient Israel guilty of? It was guilty of judgment. Guilty of, of number one, driving God out of its life. Number two, ruling in idols. Uh, immorality, uh, promoting immorality, sexual immorality, lifting up its children on the altars of Baal and Moloch. And you look at America and you can see a parallel for each one of them. So they were actually offering their babies a sacrifice yes, to, yes. to Moloch. I yeah, they that, offered up reading that. thousands to Moloch and Baal. America has offered up millions mm -hmm. of unborn children in abortion. Yes. Millions. So it's like we're crying out. It's when Billy Graham, his, he just wrote a letter recently to America, basically warning it of judgment. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned Ruth Graham saying that if God does not judge America, mm -hmm. he owes Sodom and Gomorrah an apology. Right. But, the, but there's ultimately a call and there's ultimately hope. And the harbinger is ultimately the hope. It leads to salvation and it leads to mm -hmm. a call to America. And just in a nutshell, one mystery, if I can get it in. And that is that there's a mystery that when judgment came to Israel, the calamity returned to the place where Israel was dedicated to God, of the dedication ground. It was the Temple Mount. So what could this be with America? On America's first day as a nation, it was actually, as we know it, when it had a president, was April 30th, 1789, Washington was sworn in as president. He gives a prophetic warning. Don't have time to get into it, but the warning is what will happen if America ever turns away from God. And so when we're watching it happen now. Yes. But then the entire government goes to a place appointed to pray they dedicate America to God on that first day. And so if we can find out where that place is, that is a mystery of our, our dedication ground. Where was it? It wasn't Washington, D.C. The capital, first capital was New York City. Where? Oh, Lower Manhattan. Wow. Where exactly? They went to a place of ground and dedicated America. This is our consecration ground. We know it today as Ground Zero. Oh America goodness. was dedicated to God at ground zero. And on the day of ground zero, this, sh this shock wave goes forth from the, the, the dedication ground, strikes Federal Hall where Washington gave the prophetic warning, puts a crack in that foundation. And all around ground zero, there's only one place that's protected. Every building is destroyed except one, the little stone chapel where they dedicated America mm -hmm. to God. And the reason they said it was protected is because there was an object that protected it from the force of 9-11. The object was the, was the harbinger, was the sycamore. Wow. So the oh point goodness. I want to get to, the point of the harbingers is not to condemn America, it's to save America. Mm -hmm. I believe if there was no hope, there wouldn't be the harbingers, there mm -hmm. wouldn't be the book, the harbinger coming out now. And the key to this verse is if my people, as yes. you said. Are, oh, so God is calling yes. us. We can't just say America. Right. Revival begins with us. We have right. to start living right. it. Yes. We have to be the lights we're yes. supposed to be. Good. And we have to be the answer we're supposed to be. You know, and it makes so much sense because a lot of people say, oh, well, God caused 9-11. Right. No, God didn't no. cause it's, it's, it. He just but, allowed it. But that... Man hedge of protection yes. from our yes. own sin mm -hmm. that it brought, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, like you say, a, a crack yeah. in the foundation. Yeah. The enemy yeah. was able to yes. come in yes. and it's, cause the havoc that yes. he did. God's will is mercy. God's yes. and mm -hmm. sometimes we we don't listen anymore. You know, it's you know he has to shout mm -hmm. and and so there was nothing. So so God allows it for the hope of us coming back. And I want to say, if anybody's yes. listening listening who, who are not sure, they're saying, well, how can I be safe? What should I do? Build a bomb shelter? What should I do? Well, the key word in Hebrew we shared is for safety is Yeshua. Yeshua mm -hmm. is the name of Jesus. Yes. The safety that we have is to be in Jesus. So if yes. anybody's listening who is not in Jesus, get in Jesus. And if yes. you're in yes. the Lord, but you're not right, get it right, and right. he will be your strong tower. So it's not a time for fear. Quickly, no. just comment on all of the same-sex marriage that we're, we're just being inundated with we're, across America. We're watching rapidly, since 9-11, rapidly America depart from God. And we're, it's becoming, like just like Israel did, it became yeah. almost like a pagan nation. Mm. We, America, are forgetting our foundation. And it's yeah. becoming almost the same as a pagan nation. But too much is given, much is required. Mm -hmm. So if we go this route, this is, God is warning mm. and God is calling. Right. And it, he's so, 
so full of grace and mercy that yes. he gives those warnings. Yes. Yes. He gives us those yes. harbingers mm -hmm. so right. that we yes. will turn yes. back. And, and so there is an opportunity for America yes. to do the right thing, exactly. for people to stand up, people right. of prayer to continue to right. pray, yeah. for the church yes. to take its rightful yes. position. Yes. How important is that? That is crucial. And I'm seeing more and more, at the same time, the same time the harbinger has come out, I'm seeing more and more calls and through the harbinger and apart from the harbinger yeah. to repent and come yes. together, gather together uh -huh. for repentance. We need to do that. The harbinger continues mm. to unveil truth. And, I mean, it, even things recently. Things are happening since the book. It's coming yeah. true. Yeah. 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 Wow. It's coming true. It's amazing. Well, we're out of time. I know we could listen. Could we listen yeah. for another yeah. hour? Yeah. I think